Welcome back guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to the latest edition of Terrible Tile Tuesday. I am your host, Sim Football Critic. And let's jump right into it guys. So what we already expected has happened. Le'Veon Bell has been franchise tagged for the second year in a row. And more importantly, what this means guys, not just, you know, that the Steelers are gonna pay about 14.5 if it stands the way it is. You know, he hasn't signed, obviously. I don't expect him to sign it anytime soon doesn't mean just that it's going to be that much going against the cap but what it also means to me Le'Veon Bell could be done as a Pittsburgh Steeler I think in year 2019 we won't see Le'Veon Bell anymore I think Le'Veon Bell will definitely be released um, come next year and what I mean by release is they will allow him to walk and test free agency I don't expect them to pay Le'Veon Bell again via franchise tag next season now, the reason why I don't think a deal will be done in the long term is, you know, all of the information that's coming out. You know, we know by now Le'Veon Bell has actually, you know, admitted to or confirmed the numbers that was offered last year, right? He confirmed that it was roughly a $13 million per year contract. Didn't want to do that. He wants a little more. You know, he's expressed that he wants to be paid as a running back as well as a slot receiver. Which, you know, I understand that. I understand what he's trying to do, but that's a lot of money that he's asking for. But we can't expect the Steelers to pay that, okay? And apparently the two didn't come to an agreement. Is he asking for too much? I mean, you could argue that. I say yes in terms of what the current market is. But I understand that Le'Veon Bell wants to set the new market for a running back. But would you expect the Pittsburgh Steelers to pay you that much? That's the thing. Anybody that knows the Pittsburgh Steelers, especially being a part of that organization, Le'Veon Bell should know that. And hey, maybe Le'Veon Bell just feels, listen, man, I made 12.5 last year, but make 14.5 this year. That's a pretty good amount, you know, for a two-year stint. And it is what it is. They part ways next year. I'm sure the Pittsburgh Steelers will run him into the ground again, get the best out of him that they can get, and there you have it. Now, here's the question. You know, what type of money will Le'Veon Bell get? from another team next season. I still don't think he's gonna get that amount of money. You know, he'll be one year old, and I just don't think the running back position as of yet, yes, it's valued, but is it valued at 13 to 14 or more per year? You know, that's a lot of money to be paying a running back. So, it's what we all expected. He has been franchise tagged, and of course, he's flirting with the idea of retiring. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think he's just saying that because he really doesn't have any leverage at this point. And, you know, they can still get a deal done. You know, they still have X amount of time. I'm not sure, you know, what time uh, period it will be this year. But they still, I would assume, through June or I think July, one of those dates, where they can still come to a long-term deal. Will it happen? Probably not. But, hey, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers, guys, we know they're not going to overpay. So it is what it is. So he has been tagged. Now, in terms of the cap, guys, you know, we talked about this a little bit previously. You know, the Steelers have made some cap room. You know, it's very possible that they may restructure some more deals to, you know, now that they know that the franchise tag has been placed, hasn't been signed, but at least they know that's where they're at right now. You might see them make some more moves in terms of restructuring to get some more cap space. So I think the Steelers will definitely still have the opportunity, you know, to still sign, you know, a free agent, which we desperately need to do. You know, it's obvious if you look at the draft, coming up and you look at you know what Kevin Colbert had to say about the inside linebackers he wasn't overly thrilled about the guys in that group you know he said enough to let you know that they'll probably get somebody I don't know for sure if it will be early or late now because he says it's not really a guy you know too many guys that are complete game changers maybe a couple and you would expect those guys to probably be off the board you know your Roquan Smiths guys like that Edmonds you would expect those guys to be gone now if they're there that might change the game. All right, so either way, I think they're definitely gonna draft somebody at inside linebacker, whoever it is will have to play. But I think more importantly, it lets me know I still feel confident about the Steelers going after an inside backer here in free agency once that opens up. You know, your Anthony Hitchens, Avery Williamson, guys like that, Zach Brown, keep an eye on these guys. I think the Steelers will, and they must address inside linebacker as well in free agency. All right, now as far as the uh, combine, you know, now we get into the nitty gritty, guys. I got a chance to watch the combine. Some guys did some good things, but now 
this week is where I'm going to go in and look at a lot of film. I'm going to look at a ton of film and I'll come back next week with some prospects that I think are at inside linebacker as well as safety. Now, you know, we've kind of threw out some names already, but you know, I'm really going to wait until I view the film this week. I'm actually going to get started today and I'll come back, you know, let's say five guys in both positions that I think could be potential guys that the Steelers go after first or second round and uh, we'll see how that goes. Now, I'm not going to rule out cornerback as well. You know, the Steelers could very well go cornerback again in first or second round. And I think if they do, it's very telling. If they go cornerback first or second round, that doesn't say a whole lot about Artie Burns. Because you would expect if Joe Hayden is going to be back, he's going to get a start nod. As well as, you know, the opposite guy. Artie Burns, to me, seems like he would be challenged. Because you're going to play a first or second rounder. He's going to get on the fifth. Which means he challenges one of the starters. So that would be very telling to me if they go cornerback that early. Don't rule it out. Because the Steelers are known for going after the guy that, you know, the best athlete. Even though there may be need somewhere else, they're definitely known for going and grabbing the best athlete. So don't be surprised if that happens. Now, a couple names I would throw out at you guys, man. Uh, and shout outs to my boy uh, Kenyon Wright, you know, avid follower here. Of Turbo Tile Tuesday. I'm sure he's going to be in the comments. He put me on to uh, Leighton Vander ish last week. I got a chance to look at his highlights against Oregon, you know, in the bowl. He plays at Boise State. I'm going to go back and look at some more film from him. This guy to me screams Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, he's raw, you know, a one year starter, very productive. You know, he's a height and weight and, you know, speed guy. You know, he ran fairly well. You know, he's not a speed stir, but he ran fairly well in the combine. And he, he's a physical guy. He diagnoses plays very well. You know, I can't necessarily say if he's sideline to sideline. You know, we're not going to find Ryan Shazier in this particular draft. No way, no how. That guy is not necessarily in the draft as far as what, you know, the raw skills that Shazier has. But this guy has a high motor. And he has a nose for the ball. He finds the ball, you know, good, good, solid player, a guy that you can work on. Like I said, you know, raw talent, one year starter, just like TJ Watt. And the reason why I say that's a prime candidate for the Steelers, because he's probably a guy that might get past, you know, the first 27 picks. You know, they're saying, you know, rumor has it that the Packers are high on him as well. They say he's interviewing well, so a lot of teams have their eye on him. But I think if he gets past the Packers, you know, given the other talent that's in the, that you would expect would be in the first round, I think he has a chance of being there at 28. And the Steelers would probably grab this guy at 28. Also, keep an eye on Rashad Evans. You know, Rashad Evans is another guy that could possibly still be there at that time. Now, it's going to come down to, you know, what the Steelers value the most. You know, do they value the inside linebacker that would be available or the safety that would be available? Or again, like I said, maybe it's a corner. I don't know. I'm going to go look at some more film. And again, next week when I come back and giving you my thoughts on the players that I looked at, I might be able to make a better decision at that point. And especially once free agency happens. Once we see what the Steelers do in free agency, that's going to tell us a whole lot in terms of, you know, what we expect them to get, you know, what they may go after in terms of the draft as far as first or second round. But right now, I'm going to leave you with those two names, guys. Leighton Vander-ish, Boise State guy. Go check him out. And then also, you know, Rashad Evans from Alabama. Those are the two guys that I got my eye on right now. And then, you know, next week I'll have some more names. But outside of that, man, you know, again, listening to what Kevin Colbert said. You know, Colbert said that he's not particularly ecstatic about the inside linebacker group. So, you know, we'll just have to see. We'll have to see what, what that, you know, what that means for their pick. Doesn't necessarily mean that there's not a guy that they still wouldn't take. You know, if you read between the lines, he's saying there's only a few guys that have a huge impact. But he also said there's quite a few guys in that class that either do one thing well and do the other thing well, but they don't do both things well. You know, covering the pass or, you know, rushing the quarterback or playing the run. So it's not to say that there's not a lot of talent there. I think there are some talented guys there, but we don't know which way the Steelers are going to go as far as the first pick. All right, so that's pretty much all I got for you guys this week, man. 
you know, fairly quiet. Again, not really a whole lot to talk about outside of the Le'Veon Bell news. We already knew that was going to happen. And um, let's keep an eye out. And also, there are some, some sneaky good running backs, man. Some very good running backs in this draft. You know, some guys that will probably be there fourth, fifth, you know, third round. You know, I think the Steelers are also going to grab a back again. No long-term deal. If that doesn't happen, you got to go ahead and start preparing, you know, for the future. So don't be surprised if the Steelers also grab a running back in this draft. Couple guys will be there. Speaking of that, let me mention two other guys really quick that just wowed me in the combine. Saquon Barkley. I mean, come on. I already knew what this kid brought to the table. Penn State guy. I've been watching him play. But, I mean, did he not test off the charts at the combine? I think the New York Giants need to go ahead and grab him, but don't be surprised. Cleveland Browns may grab him with the first round pick because they got, you know, they got the first overall, if I'm not mistaken, and they got the number four pick. You could easily get him and come back in the fourth and get a quarterback because one of those top six quarterbacks is still going to be there. So don't be surprised if the Cleveland Browns make a splash, but if they don't, the New York Giants probably should go ahead and grab him. They've been, you know, their run game has been abysmal for a very long time. So I wouldn't be surprised if they did that. And then the kid, Shaquem uh, Griffin. Wow, 4'3", 40. I mean, this guy is a baller. Go look at his film as well, man. Go look at this guy's film. He can play. I didn't even realize that he was a twin brother to um, Shaq Griffin that plays for the Seahawks. That's pretty cool. You know, the cornerback that they drafted last year. I'm just wondering, man, will any teams give him a shot? You know, with him having his handicap, you know, for you guys that don't know, he only has one hand, didn't really stop his production. You know, he has everything up to like the, you know, the wrist, just doesn't have a full hand. So I wonder if teams are going to take a chance with him in the first round. I mean, I'm not opposed, you know, if he's still around late third round or so or something like that i'm not opposed to the steelers taking a shot i mean listen he has a handicap but the kid can play he is very very talented super duper fast he could be an outstanding you know special teams guy for you right out the gate i'm just saying let's see what's going to happen with this kid man i'm hoping that you know this guy gets a shot at least an opportunity to show what he can do um so yeah those two guys really wowed me uh, in the combine and you know a couple of DBs as well DBs were, ran pretty well a couple guys I was very shocked man some of those dudes was running like four sixes which you know that might not cut it much in the league it makes me think about uh, uh, what's the guy's name from Florida last year uh, uh, Tabor I can't remember his first name but I think you guys know who I'm talking about Tease Tabor or something like that ran a very very slow 40 and that hurt his time I mean hurt his uh, chances of getting picked early um, but yeah all right, man, so that's about all I got for you guys. Again, man, if you're new to the channel, you like what you saw, you're interested in what you see, also the other content on the channel, don't be afraid, man. Go ahead and subscribe. Be happy to have you here as well. Cut on your notifications so you're fully aware of the next video. And I promise, guys, it will never hurt you to hit that like button. All right, that's going to do it for now. But like always, we'll catch you in the next video.